All right, guys, well, I'm back today with another high value and budget optics option for an AR-15 or similar platform, a new LPVO or low power variable optic from North Tech. This is the Assault, a one to four low power variable optic with a mill dot reticle system, a mount included in the box, and a micro red dot attached to the top. I'm gonna to talk about the specs and features performance of this optic, and I'm gonna give a huge shout out to North Tech for sending this out to the channel for us to try out. I've reviewed all of their red dots, and I am a huge fan of their products. In fact, I've done so much testing of their red dots, including torture testing, dropping them from 40-foot shooting towers. I actually shot one of their optics with a 12-gauge shotgun at 10 yards with birdshot. It survived. It held zero. I've become a huge fan of their products, and I know a lot of you guys like them too. So when they came out with this LPVO, I know a lot of people were asking for reviews. So this is my opinions. I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly things I would change and also some things I really like at this price of about $145. And speaking of the price, if you use the coupon code 704 Tactical, you actually save 15% off any of the North Tech products. So even if you don't like this optic, you can use that code on any of the red dots and save yourself 15% off. And they also have a lot of free shipping options. So when you add this to the cart and add it to the code, you can get the price down to about 123 ish dollars with free shipping, which is an insane value if this works, guys. And it does, a sneak peek. Now there are some criticisms, and there are a lot of positives, so if you want a full overview of this, let's stay tuned and keep on watching, and we'll dig through all of those specs and features. The first thing I want to do is discuss just the biggest overall specs and features, the fact that this is a one to four power scope, meaning you can set it at the one power setting and use it sort of as a red dot, or you can zoom it into the four power setting and take some more long distance shots. The other main features is it comes with the mount in the box, and it's actually a very solid mount. I feel like that's a high value when that's included. It did not walk loose, shift zero. It was great right out of the box. Also on the top of the mount, you have a pick rail and a micro dot. And the micro dot itself is actually very interesting, uh, but I don't like micro dots on the top of the optic. The first thing I would personally do if I wasn't testing this optic for review was pull this off and put it on something else but I wanted to leave it on to test it in its original configuration and put a lot of rounds through it. As you can see in the intro, I dumped a ton of 7.62 by 39 through this gun and there are even more shots taken off camera that I can't show you of me testing other accessories while this optic was mounted and everything held zero perfectly. So right off the bat, it seems to be very durable and reliable with a high recoiling gun like this KS-47 chambered in 7.62 by 39. The red dot held zero, it worked great, but I'm not a huge fan of it. It's one of those cheaper red dots uh, and sitting uh, so high off the bore axis on top of this, I feel like it's pointless, especially with an LPVO. The idea of an LPVO is having something at the one power setting to use it sort of as a red dot that defeats the purpose of having an additional red dot, which gives a really difficult cheek weld all the way up here to see it. I feel like it's confusing. The muscle memory is kind of weird when you're training between looking at the optic and the red dot. So strip this off, put it on another handgun, and you get a bonus right there. Again, for $123, all of this is included, but something to consider. I will be probably taking this off and putting it on something else. Now moving back to the optic itself, we already talked about that one to four. Well, this is a one to four uh, second focal plane optic, meaning the reticle stays the same size no matter what zoom level you're at. So the mill dots are only accurate at the highest zoom level at the four power setting. As you can see in the intro, when you zoom in and out, you can use those mill dot calculations at the four power setting. But again, they're going to stay the same size throughout the zoom levels. Now up close, it actually looks really clear. A lot of these one to four budget style optics have problems being very clear at one or being clear at four, depending on what they're leaning towards. This has clear glass and it's very easy to make out your target at every single zoom level. It truly seems like a one power setting so you can use it as a red dot with both eyes open. It has illumination on the other side, it goes from red, green to blue, not a huge fan. Um, 
just because it illuminates the entire crosshair section and then it illuminates the perimeter. I feel like when it's on its brightest setting, you get this perimeter ring and it's kind of distracting, but at some lower settings, it's very usable uh, for dusk or nighttime hunting. I know some states allow nighttime hunting of uh, coyotes, varmints, things like that. And then again, if you're just doing normal hunting right at twilight, uh, either in the morning or at night, uh, this is going to be good to illuminate those reticle if you want to take this hunt. Thing, and I think this would be a great hunting optic. Moving along, the turrets themselves are actually locking turrets, so you can unlock them with this screw. You can click them over. The clicks themselves are reasonably audible and tactile, nothing to write home about, but there are definitely no complaints there. It seems to sight in really well, and again, it holds zero. I've put a ton of rounds through this, and this is where I want to give a huge shout out to AIM Surplus. Uh, these guys are an online distributor of tons of different things, but including ammunition. They sell me ammo at cost, and that's the only way I can continue to produce reviews like that, as these guys are selling me ammo at cost when it comes in stock. I got to jump over there and grab it. So we put a lot of ammo through it and it held up well. It's got kind of a sunshade built in. It comes with flip up lens covers, which I took off because you will have an adjustable diopter on the back. So you can focus it if you're primarily shooting at the one power setting or if you're going to be shooting it primarily at distance shooting. Uh, this is good to adjust the diopter to get everything squared away. It's got sort of a throw lever built into the uh zoom lever itself or zoom knob itself it works pretty good it's easy to throw it's not too stiff it's not too loose and again that's just a nice touch included in here now when we're speaking about that reticle and we're speaking about its functions i feel like that mil dot reticle is good at the four power setting for distance shooting out to three four maybe even 500 yards uh, depending on what size target you're shooting at but where I feel it lacks is at the CQB style. When you zoom it into the one power setting, uh, it will lead in with a slightly larger lines to narrow lines and you can make your shots up close. But I do like to see reticles with that almost circle dot combination similar to an EOTech for CQB style shooting. And I feel like you can also incorporate a mil dot crosshairs with that circle uh, for close up shooting. And I feel like the reticle is really lacking. One of my biggest complaints of this optic, I feel like if they would change the reticle around, uh, you would have a lot more function. So hopefully something like that will improve in the future. Again, if you're going to be primarily using this as a close-up optic, you may be a little bit disappointed. But if your primary use is going to be about 25 yards to 150 yards, I think this optic is really going to shine. I was stretching out to 125 yards with this 762 by 39 steel cased ammo, and we were plinking away steel targets. The glass was reasonably clear, especially for this price point of optic. And then one of the strong points of this optic, I thought, was the eye box and eye relief. The eye relief is how far away from the optic you need to be. I felt like it was very forgiving. And the eye box is how far left, right, up and down you can move without that scope kind of blacking out. And I feel like, again, this one was very forgiving. Um, most scopes in this $120, $150 price range, I shouldn't say most, um, that is a concern of mine. How forgiving is that eye box? I've seen some that if you slightly shift your head left or right, the whole thing just blacks out and disappears. And then I've seen some other ones in this price category really nail it. Uh, this one is doing a good job. So in summary, guys, I feel like uh, this is more of a gimmick. They should strip this off. I feel like resolving maybe some of the uh, reticle issues that I personally see would help me. But again, that's more of a personal preference. I like having something a little bit larger ring in the center for CQB and up close shooting uh, that this one doesn't give me. And then again, the illumination is kind of a downfall for me because it, when you're illuminating that crosshairs, you're illuminating the whole thing and the rim, it kind of washes everything out. In my opinion, it gets a little bit confusing, especially for rapid, quick shooting. So if they would figure out a way to just illuminate maybe that center CQB style ring that they would add to the reticle, strip this off, either lower the cost or put that cost into redesigning the reticle system, I feel like this would be one of the best optics that you could possibly get for that $120 price point. But as it stands, I still feel like it's a very high value, but I wanted to do this thorough review so you know exactly what you're getting. Again, all the information and linking will be in the description below as well as the coupon code if you decide to buy this. And I feel like it's a great durable option, especially if you know exactly what you're getting. You can find more information and photos of the reticle online if you want to dig in a little deeper. But I do hope that intro kind of explains it nicely and shows you it in use. 
So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.